Hello everyone. So uh, today uh, I took the second lesson of aircraft general. So I think uh, you have got uh, some good uh, knowledge about from the first lesson. So now I took the second lesson for you guys. So okay. So no need to talk a lot. So we can move to the lesson right now because today lesson is a little bit longer. So uh, okay. And also I want to. Uh, tell you please subscribe my channel and uh, don't forget to press the bell icon and also please share these videos because it's very important uh, if someone want to come to uh, aviation as an aircraft maintenance technician field all right so uh, let's go to the video all right so uh, let's start the second lesson of this series aircraft general lesson two all right so uh, In this lesson, we will talk about the following topics, structural breakdowns and zoning, ground handling, cockpit presentation and avionic compartment. All right. So now let's go to the first lesson, structural breakdown and zoning, structural breakdown and zoning. All right. Here you can see the aircraft structure and these are the axis, Z axis, Y axis and x axis so you can see this is the uh, the plus x so it means here so at distance from the station number zero and the plus y over there plus y yeah plus y over there lateral distance from the uh, ad left side and the minus y lateral distance from the ad right side and the plus z plus z is here vertical vertical distance from the uh, FD up and uh, the minus EZ over there. So vertical distance from the FD down and AD means air graph data and FD means fuselage data, right? All right. So now and here the location of an aircraft structure is determined by the references and access mentioned above, right? and the 100 inches or 254 centimeters forward of uh, aircraft nose is where the reference station zero for all structural measurements in the x-axis is located right you can see this is the uh, station zero so it is situated from the nose 254 centimeters forward all right or it means 100 inches right Okay, so here these are the major aircraft reference axis, major aircraft reference axis, right? So you can say Z axis, I mean vertical axis here, and this is, uh, yeah, FD means what? FD means fuselage datum, right? So uh, here is the fuselage datum, X axis. So you can see the uh, vert uh, vertical stabilizer over there right so this is uh, from the front view okay so you can go through the pic uh, pictures over there right okay so uh, the next one the ata 100 specifications are used to divide the airplane structure right uh, the ata specifications ata 100 specifications used to divide the aircraft, aircraft uh, structure right so you can see here this is the aircraft. So uh, for the first sections, you can the fuselage. It is specification for the fuselage. We can see 53. So 1853 is the fuselage. So 53-10-00. Zero zero. Here also fuselage 53 and also nasals. So we can say 54 and uh, uh, 57. It's for the wings and uh, uh, and for the horizontal stabilizer, we can say 55 right okay so this is the, i mean the 800 specifications are used to divide the airplane structure so here you can say 510000 structurally general and 520000 it means 52 we are using for the doors for general and 53 for the fuselage and 54 for the nasals pylons and 55 for stabilizer here's here 55 for the stabilizer this area and 56 for windows and 57 for wings in general okay right so the next one here the uh, section number is assigned to every important element of the aircraft that matches to production 
right the base number for the fuselage section is 10 you can see right the base number is 10 it is start from uh, 10 like 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 19 point one like this base number is 10 right so uh, the various sections of the fuselage are divided for the manufacturing purposes right so they are they are divided the sections because to useful for manufacturing right all right, so you can see the base number for the overall wing section is 20, right? Remember, for the fuselage is 10 and for the wing section is 20, right? So you can see here the slats. Slats, we can, uh, the the, uh, over, uh, the base number is 24. So it start from 2, 24 and fix leading edge, fix leading edge over there. So we can see 23. See the aileron, aileron start from 28 and the wing tips 29. And here the fixed trailing edge is 25. Then spoilers, air brakes, 26. And the flaps, 27, right? So the base number is 20. So we'll go to the next one here. The general tailplane section base number is 30. Remember, general tailplane base number is 30. So the vertical stabilizer section number is 31, right? And the horizontal stabilizer section number is 35, right? So uh, the next one, the engine section base number is 40. Engine section or else the nasal section base number is 40. So the, for the CFM 56-5 uh, engine, you can say the pylon, you can say 41 and the engine 42. And the V2500 engines 41 or 42, same, right? All right, so let's go to the landing gear section base number. Landing gear section base number is 50. Right, so nose landing gear doors we can say 51, and the main gear do and doors, main gear do and doors is called 52. Right, so let's go to the general belly fairing section base number. General belly fairing section base number is 60. Right, so here the belly fairings you can see the belly fairing location and the belly fairing section number is 60. Right, so this is the belly fairing, and now we're going to move to the station numbers. Right. Uh, right, okay. So the station number is the cross sections distance from a reference point in centimeters, right? These are the station numbers, right? Station uh, 350, station number 950, station, uh, all right, like this. And this is frame one, frame 24, frame 35, frame 47, frame 54, frame 70, frame 77, frame 67, like this, okay? Right, so this is the uh, de uh, datum zero, right? You start from uh, uh, 254 centimeters forward from the nose, uh, aircraft nose, right? So the station of frame numbers shown correspond to the station boundaries, all right? Okay, so let's go to the CFM 56-5 engine and V2500 engine. See, here are the engine station numbers, here are the Engine station number C is station 297, station 684, station 719, station 800, like this. Okay, so station 313, station 388. So you can just go through this uh, picture, right? So let's go to the vertical stabilizer. Here are the vertical stabilizer station numbers. And for the vertical stabilizer, the reference station is EZ0. Here is the EZ0 vertical, vertical station, uh, reference station, right? Reference station is uh, Z0 and the VTEZ axis, right? Okay, so the next one, horizontal stabilizer. Here is the horizontal stabilizer. Here are the horizontal stabilizer station numbers. And for the horizontal stabilizer, the reference station is Y0. Reference station is Y. Okay, this is the Y. Zero is reference stations at the aircraft Y axis. All right. Okay, so here are uh, here are the wing station numbers. Here are the wing station numbers. For wings, the reference station is wing reference axis. WY is wing reference axis is located at 1868 millimeters or else 73.54 inches from aircraft X axis. So here is the aircraft X axis or the datum. The, the, the wing reference axis is located is one point uh, sorry 186.8 centimeters it means uh, 1868 millimeters from aircraft axis so this is the uh, 
wing reference axis i mean for the uh, uh, horizontal stabilizer right all right so now we'll go to the zone numbers so there are eight major zones in the aircraft right there are eight major zones in the aircraft each major zone is identified by the first digit of a three digit number right so here are the zones see 100 to 199 lower half fuselage so we can say 100 say so and 200 to 299 upper half fuselage so you can say this area 200 so and this one 300 to 399 we can say empennage and fuselage tail section here 300 so and 400 to 499 pylon and nasals we can say pylon and nasal and 500 to 599 left wing 500 to 599 left wing area and 600 to 699 right wing area and 700 to 799 landing gear we can say the landing gears and 800 to 9 899 doors all right so normally we can uh, see uh, each major zone is identified by the first digit of the three digit number so see 100 zone you can say 100 zone uh, 200 zone and 300 zone 400 zone, 500 zone, 600 zone, and 700 zone, and those we can say 800 zones, right? Right. Okay, see the fuselage and the vertical stabilizer zone. Here are fuselage and vertical stabilizer zone numbers, right? See, you can see 212, 211. This is, uh, why, you know, why? Because it's two numbers. This is for the left and right, okay, 212 and 211. So you can say the 195 belly and 196, okay? Right, so you can just go through uh, this picture and uh, see, uh, they describes about uh, even and odd. See, even number is right hand side aircraft zones. In the aircraft, right hand side, we can uh, use even numbers and the odd numbers, left hand side aircraft zones, right? All right, so the belly fairing zones. Now we're going to belly fairing zones. See, here are the belly fairing zone numbers. See, uh, belly fairing 199, 190. So, as uh, we studied in the previous page, 191 is uh, even number. So, even num sorry, odd number. So, it is left hand. And uh, 192 is uh, even number. So, we can uh, understand that is uh, right side panel. All right, so uh, this is station uh, 1,324, frame 31. Here station 2,456, 2, so frame 55. All right, here the other station. And see, uh, okay, uh, 734 to 744, main landing gear, main door. These two are main landing gear, main doors. And see the next screen for the explanation. All right. So the next one, landing gear zone. These are the landing gear zones here are the landing gear zone numbers you can see 744 734 so this is uh, uh left side uh, main landing gear doors and uh, this is right side main landing gear doors 741 734 31 this is left side uh, main landing gear and right side main landing gear right okay so uh now let's move to the here are the wings and horizontal stabilizer zone numbers here are the wings and horizontal stabilizer zone numbers right so here the aircraft data my uh, aircraft datum is here so here 511 611 600 500 600 for the right side 500 for the left side right 541 521 okay you can just go through this picture right so here is here are the nasals and pylon zone numbers nasal and pylon zone numbers right so this is uh, see 411 uh, 431 is for the left side 441 for the right side okay this is efm 56-5 engine and this is between 500 uh, engine right all right, next one, door zones, right? Here are the door zone numbers. Here, uh, 831, 833, this is left side doors. And 842, 841, 843, so this is right side doors, right? All right, so now go to the access doors and panel identification. See, the zone numbers uh, of the panel, the followed by two letter suffix that is placed within the zone is used to identify access doors and panels, right? So the first letter indicates which access door or panel it is starting from the reference axis A first and B second, or you can go like this and G seventh, etc. The second letter indicates the access door or panel location, 
right? So the uh, see the second letter we can see if there's a second letter as a T, we can say this is top surface. And if this B, bottom surface, or L, left side, right, our right side, Z is internal, and F is floor panel, W is side wall panel, and C is ceiling panel, right? Okay, see, uh, here I explain as in the uh, before uh, previous page, see here are example of access panel on the left side, lower surface. So if there's A, A is the first panel, and B, bottom, so this is, the panel in the bottom and but if this is first one so 540 first bottom panel right and this is 540 b is second second bottom panel right so is it see 540 first uh internal panel right so this is the uh pa access panel uh numbering or identifications right all right so now let's move to the second uh part 2.2 ground handling all right, you can see the ground handling. See, here are the servicing point of in the aircraft, right? In the aircraft, there are so many servicing points. So uh, there are normally uh, 11 servicing points. So this is the main point. So the, uh, these are the points. So you can just go, I, I will tell you, see first one, toilet servicing. Here is the first one, where is the first one? Yeah, here is the first one, toilet servicing. Second one, water fill, filling and the drainage. Second one, where is the second one? Here, water filling and drainage over there. And ground electrical power receptacle, third one. And ground low pressure air connection. Uh, low pressure air connection over there. And ground high pressure air connection. And five, yeah, here is five, low pressure and high pressure. And hydraulic servicing panels, where is hydraulic servicing panel? Six, yeah, these are the hydraulic uh, yellow, uh, blue and uh, green okay hydraulic servicing panels all right so uh next one uh hydraulic servicing panels and the idg oil filter seven idg oil filter over there engine oil filter eight engine oil filter refuel defuel panels and nine where is the nine i refuel defuel panels over there and gravity filling panels 10 where is 10 yeah gravity filling panel and apu oil filter 11 apu oil filter and uh, more we can say these are the optional fillings right all right so now let's go to the here are the aircraft servicing arrangements right servicing arrangements you can see first uh, jetway first one is jetway where is the first one okay we can see the first one yeah this is the jetway to enter for the aircraft and second one lavatory service trunk Laboratory service tank is there and towing tractor. We have the towing tractor. Towing tractor is third. Th yeah, towing tractor is here. And fourth, electrical ground power unit. Electrical ground power unit here. And uh, galley servicing truck. Uh, fifth one, galley servicing truck over there. And galley servicing truck. Uh, second one, sixth one also, galley servicing truck. Two galley servicing trucks over there. And laboratory servicing truck, seventh. Laboratory servicing truck. And stairway, eight. Stav is over there, water service truck, 9, air conditioning, vehicles, 10, and bulk loader. Here the bulk loader, 11, and the bulk loader, 12. All right. So this is the aircraft servicing arrangement. And next one, here is the turning radio of the aircraft. This is the turning radio of the aircraft. You can see the feed meters Y and A, R3, R4, R5, R6, right? Okay, so this is the Y distance, uh, feet, 15 feet and 1 inches, right? So you can just go through this picture and here is the radi uh, turning radius of the aircraft, theoretically center of turn for the minimum radius, slow continuous turning, symmetrical thrust, no differential braking, dry surface, all right? Okay, so now let's go to the uh, third section, 2.3, cockpit presentation. In this section, you will know the general cockpit layout and main panel arrangement, okay? So, all right. Here is a 320 cockpit. You can see 320 cockpit over there. And the cockpit has an adjustable seat for two crew members. There are two adjustable seats over there, two crew members, and the third occupant, third occupant here. And the, depending on the configuration, the fourth occupant also there. So normally, uh, they have they have three uh, seats, but uh, depending on the configuration, they have a fourth occupant seats also. Though so these are the you can see these are the two seats over there and here I have a one more seat and here I have a one more seat because I don't have a picture to put the whole uh, cockpit, right? So you can just get an idea from this picture, right? 
Okay, so so this is the overhead panel here. In the up, I have an overhead panel. You can see from my background here. This is the overhead panel. So the overhead panel, the controls of the most aircraft systems are located on the overhead panels, all right? Control of the aircraft are located on the most of the controls are located in the overhead panel. See here, hydraulic, hydraulic systems and electrical systems. Okay, everything is there. And the overhead panel is divided into two main sections. The first one is forward section, including the system panel. This is the forward section. Aft section mainly comprised in the circuit breakers. These are the circuit breakers, 49BU. This is the circuit breakers, all right? All right, so let's go to the glass shield, right? You can see uh, this area, my background, this is the glass shield in the cockpit. So the flight control unit, FCU, include the electronic flight instrument system. F is control and initiate for control and monitoring of the auto flight system, right? So if it's, uh, in, in, in later DJ, I mean, in the future uh, uh, lessons, I will explain about the things inside this uh, flight control unit. Uh, we will go deeply, but now just only general, just get a uh, roughly idea, right? The flight control unit is located on the glass shield. Flight control unit also located in the uh, glass shield. The master caution and master warning lights are also located on the glass, right? Master warning, master caution lights also located in this glass shield. All right, now the main instrument panel. So main instrument panel you can see, right? So six interchangeable cathode ray tubes. These are the cathode ray tubes and we can interchange are located on the main instrument panel and two of them are dedicated to ECAM. These are the ECAM uh, cathode ray tubes and the others are two primary flight display and two navigation displays. These are the primary flight display for the captain and the first officer and navigation displays. Standby instruments and landing gear controls are also located on the main instrument panel, right? Okay, so here is the uh, center pedestal. Center pedestal over there, here is the uh, thrust reverse and the thrust reverse are reverse. Here, the pitch control, tree trim control wheels, right? So you can say landing gear, gravity extension over there, handset over there, right? Just go through this picture. See the center pedestal, several control panels are located on the center pedestal as you see in the picture, right? So the main control panels are thrust reverse and thrust reverse levers and pitch trim wheels and the flap and slat control brakes controls MCDU, right? Here is the MCDU, right? All right, so now let's go to the side consoles. The side sticks and nose wheel steering handles are mounted on the side console, right? So here the oxygen mass is there and this is the uh, nose wheel steering handle and here is the side stick, right? So the side console provide documentation storage, oxygen mass and communication devices, all right? Okay, so now let's go to the 2.4 avionic compartment, right? So the avionic compartment, you can see uh, avionic compartment here, uh, ATVU, aft electronic rack, ATVU, aft electronic rack over there. And here is the access panel we can access to here and here access doors over there in the right side. In 107VU, uh, relay and contractor boxes, relay and contractor boxes over there and here is access door over there. And this is 70VU, announced test, uh, light test unit, announced light test unit over there. And 103 VU relay and contractor boxes over there. And this is 90 VU for the electronic track. 109 weather radar cell here and access doors is there. We can go from down. And 106 VU ACDC emergency power center. ACDC emergency power center over there. This is situated in the left side. Right. So, all right. So let's go to the see the electronic avionic compartment is located below the cockpit cabin floor, right? Electronic cabin compartments are located below the cockpit and the cabin floors. It includes electronic racks, 90 VU and 80 VU, as we see, uh, as we see in the picture, see, 90 electronic racks, electronic racks here, there, a 90 VU and 80 VU, right? Uh, see the weather radar cells, 109 VU and the relay and contractor boxes, 103VU and 107VU and the round serial light test unit 70CU and ACDC emergency power center 106VU. All right, so uh, that is the end of this today lesson. So uh, from this lesson, uh, okay, so uh, from this lesson we learned uh, how many chapters, four chapters we learned from this lesson. We can uh, see what are they, yeah, here are they. So in this lesson, we learn structural breakdowns and zoning, ground handling, cockpit presentations, avionic compartments. So hope you will have a better knowledge about these four sections.
and uh, uh, okay so uh, and uh, I, I will do one more lessons regarding the aircraft general yeah i will do one more lessons regarding the aircraft general so then uh, the aircraft general is finished so then we can move to the next section so uh, if you have any questions you can uh, comment it down uh in and also don't forget to subscribe my channel and also uh please uh, press your bell icon then be, uh, because i will do more videos in the future all right so uh, that is the end of lesson and i uh, hope you enjoy and hope you get a good knowledge from this lesson so we will meet you in the next lesson okay have a good day